In Joker, 2019, we get to see a side of the Joker before he dons his signature makeup. Before he was Gotham's very own clown prince of crime, the Joker was Arthur Fleck. He was just a regular clown, for living, and a part-time comedian in Gotham City. Arthur struggles with mental disorder and is working to make ends meet to provide for his aging mother. He also suffers from a condition where he involuntarily laughs at a stressful situation. At the beginning, Arthur is feeling more depressed at the current state of Gotham and society's callousness towards those in impoverished conditions like him. Is it just me? Or is it getting crazier out there? Despite his growing despair, Arthur did not immediately lose hope. At the beginning, we see him focusing on things such as his stand-up comedy routine and the budding romance with his next-door neighbor. The story also explores Arthur's journey to meet with his long-lost father, which he believes to be Thomas Wayne. We are talking about Thomas the billionaire mayoral candidate, and yes, coincidentally, Bruce Wayne's father. As we know, Arthur's story did not end well. His comedy career didn't take off. The romance with his neighbor was nothing more than a delusion. Moreover, the identity of his father being Thomas Wayne was a lie created by his own mother. Unlike most movies and stories with fantasies born out of human expectations, Joker, 2019, shows what would happen when those expectations are confronted with a cold and cruel reality. This separation is exactly what Albert Camus called the absurd. 20th century French philosopher Albert Camus described this longing for happiness and meaning despite a cold and harsh reality as something he called the absurd. In his essay, The Myth of Sisyphus, Camus writes, Man stands face to face with the irrational. He feels within him his longing for happiness and for reason. The absurd is born of this confrontation between the human need and the unreasonable silence of the world. In the movie, Arthur remarks, I used to think that my life was a tragedy, but now I realize it's a comedy. Like Arthur, German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer also noted a similarity between the two. The life of every individual, viewed as a whole and in general, and when only its most significant features are emphasized, is really a tragedy. But gone through in detail, it has the character of a comedy. Will and Representation, Arthur Schopenhauer Like tragedy, comedy works by subverting our expectations. We find jokes to be funny because the outcome of a story is not in line with what we expect them to be. This is another take on jokers and philosophy. Mr. Bean is funny not because he drives a car normally from inside the driver's seat like what we expect from common people. This subversion is something that could be attributed to jokers and philosophy. Yet, this very same subversion is also what gives birth to tragedies in life. We grieve for the death of a loved one or the failure to reach our dreams because they are not in line with what we expect the outcome of our lives to be. Arthur's statement indicates his realization of the absurdity of such an existence and his choice to embrace it. So, despite his reputation as being insane, the Joker's state of mind is one born out of a clear awareness of his own existence. While the Jokers and their philosophy seemingly do things out of impulse, his action does hold a deeper purpose in mind. Unlike most villains, the Joker is not driven by money or power. His role, as he put, is as an agent of chaos. I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> spreading chaos and fear to those around him. In Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight, 2008, we get to see the effect Joker has when he is unleashed into society. One of the most frightening effects the Joker has is in how he can incite others, even good ordinary people, to commit atrocious actions. In one instance, he threatens to blow up a random hospital in Gotham. This is only to incite citizens to kill a person who plans to reveal Batman's identity on TV. In another occasion, he plants bombs on three separate ferries, but gives each of the boat's passengers their detonators. Such conditions eventually force them to blow one of the others if they themselves want to survive. Introduce a little anarchy. Upset the established order and everything becomes chaos. 
I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> Joker's point by doing these sorts of actions is to prove that in times of emergencies, seemingly good ordinary people will drop their moral codes and justify even the cruelest acts of evil for their own benefit. Or as Joker puts it, See, their morals, their code, it's a bad joke. We've dropped at the first sign of trouble. They're only as good as the world allows them to be. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. The Joker believes that all moral values and codes are baseless is what philosophers refer to as nihilism. German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche describes nihilism as nihilism, any aim is lacking, any answer to the question why is lacking. What does nihilism mean? That the supreme values devaluate themselves. Will to power, Friedrich Nietzsche. To Nietzsche, the existence of such nihilistic ideology is a very dangerous phenomena to society as a whole. According to Nietzsche, a nihilist is someone that would not only let go of their own personal beliefs in any moral codes or values, but also act to encourage others to do the same. In The Dark Knight, the Joker's attempt at spreading his nihilistic view ultimately culminates in his turn of Harvey Dent. The Joker managed to turn the once symbolic hope of the city, the so-called White Knight of Gotham, into a murderous criminal hell-bent on revenge. The two sides of a coin belong to the White Knight of Gotham, representing the transformation of Harvey Dent, a victim of the Joker. This is what makes the Joker such a terrifying villain. He is not simply a criminal who commits evil acts like stealing or murder. What makes the Joker truly frightening is his ability to make others question and abandon their own concepts of good and evil. Both iterations of the Joker leave behind a profound philosophical message.